Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining me again in this uh, video, which I think it will be quite short. We will discuss about using abstractions to um, implement uh, the DTOs for um, uh, Spring Data JPA queries. Uh, in one of the previous videos, if you've been here with me on this channel, uh, you have seen me using records and classes for projections instead of entities. Uh, today I'm going to present you a different approach uh, where we will use interfaces. So we will basically use abstractions and we will allow um, Spring Data behind the scenes create the implementations via dynamic proxies. And then we will make a comparison and we'll see uh, when would you use one or the other? When, when we will, we, which, which are basically the advantages of using the one, the one and the other. If you are watching the event live here with me, don't forget to have a live chat so you can ask me questions in the live chat. I hope you already see my screen. Uh, and you can see that I have already created to, to spare some time, uh, a spring project. And the only thing I did, uh, is adding a few dependencies. So I added the Spring Data JPA. I added the uh, starter web because I'm going to create an endpoint to use it for demonstration purposes. Um, the MySQL driver and Lombok, and that's basically it. Uh, so we will connect to a database because we prove, of course, writing queries. Um, and with that being said, let's get started. So if I'm going here, you'll see I have a demo database and a very simple uh, demonstration product table with a couple of records. So this is what we will use for our demonstration. Uh, let's go and start writing a few code and see, first of all, how we use abstractions uh, as projections. So what will I do here? Uh, I will create a few packages. So I say controllers for the controllers and then I will uh, obviously need entities. So entities and then I will use uh, right here repositories. Um, what else? And of course, maybe the DTOs should have their own um, uh, separate package. And I think that should be it. So we start with the entities if you want. Uh, and then we will have here, of course, the product entity. Uh, being a JPA entity, we need to annotate it with our own entity. So at entity. Observe, I'm, I'm still using Spring Boot 2. Point something, so I still have Java X. Soon it will be turned into Jakarta, but that's something else. Uh, so private int ID, annotate it with ID, mandatory, and then private string name. And then, of course, you can just have getters and setters above if I'm using Lombok. Um, and then the repository. So let's create a JP repository. So I have product repository, which needs to extend. Well, it needs to extend the Spring Data repository interface. So it would be either JP repository or crude repository, but let's make it simple for us. Um, JP repository. So product and the type of the primary key and that's basically where we write the the query so let's let's just choose a, a simple query and let's say find all abstraction and here is where i add the query annotation above and we will write the query So for Spring Boot 6 and Spring Boot 3, do we need to learn everything again? No, of course not. It's based on what you already know and some features added, so no worries. So what I was doing here is I, I would say select, usually I say select P from product P. Okay, so I select all the products. But then if I do that, then I, I have selected an entity. So that's not what you want. No, you want to select uh, via an abstraction. So look what I'm going to do here. I will say uh, product uh, abstraction and I will make this an interface. And in the interface, I will declare only what I need to get. So I will say int get ID, string get name. So you see that the, the 
names of the methods and the return types they are precisely my fields no so now what i need to do the only thing that i need to do is i need to put it here say product abstraction and then that that will work so it's out of the box and we will prove this so we're going to uh, create a controller um, we annotate it with rest controller we have for the sake of the example and to save time directly the proc the directory repository here but of course in a real world application you would have a service and never the the repository is directly in the controller um, and then my say public list of product abstraction get all abstraction okay so here it is so you see i i didn't implement anywhere this interface did i so i will say just get mapping product products and then i will return product repository find all abstraction cool so you see i, I directly return the interface I, I only have to put it here. I still return an entity in the query, but I will let Spring Data behind the scenes to uh, create everything else. We will only have getters in the interface. Yes, it's mandatory actually. You can't have setters here uh, because, well, you wouldn't be able to set it anywhere. So when whenever uh, the Spring Data behind the scenes will create a, a proxy instance, the only thing it can do is uh is setting the values and allowing you to get them so you cannot set them as basically makes sense same as we discussed some weeks ago when i showed you how to use records usually the dto's need to be immutable so this is basically immutability so not not that um not that it it only has getters it must only have have getters okay uh, so I, I don't need to, to map it uh, uh, anywhere so you can see I have the entity but it will automatically map okay so then I, I do start oh shh, I, I, I can't start it now sorry I, I first really 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 need to add spring data source URL JDBC MySQL localhost uh, demo and data source username which in my case is root with no password so now it should be able to connect let's start the application uh, and of course I will need postman or something similar so you can see I, I already have the product endpoint from one of my previous demonstrations here so we wait a bit Well, can I not use a mapper instead? Of course you can, but the idea is to have everything behind the scenes, isn't it? So I'm showing you here how to do things in the easier way. Instead of having another mapper, why shouldn't you do that? I mean, the idea is, uh, on the contrary, you simplify the things this way, okay? So just, just simplify everything. So yes, of course you can map it yourself if you want, but why should you map it? Um okay and then i call them and then yeah you can you can see that the result is exactly the expected one and of course you already know and again i will i can i can show it to you again if you want to have a say product record or even a class but but let's make it a record because we use java 17 now no so in id string name uh and you you know that you can use a record as well so uh in that case let me actually create a separate method for that you and in the case uh, of not, not only record but in the case of a class as well you really need yourself to map it here so you need to say new and then the full package com example everything dto oops Oh, no, no, no. 
Oh, that's it. Uh, projections, DTO, record, and then you map it, okay? But that's only if you use a class or a record the way we proved some some weeks ago in another video, okay? Now, what is, you can, you can clearly see the difference. So with an abstraction, it's uh, easier. It's simpler. You don't have to map yourself anyhow the object. It will map behind the scenes. So it will be a proxy implementation created by Spring Data. Uh, it has this advantage, of course. It has the disadvantage that you don't have control over the construction of the instance. So you can see that in the second one, the one that we proved in a, in a video some time ago, uh, you not only uh, have uh, the uh, instance that will be different uh, than the entity provided, but it, it's also uh, it's also giving you access to how the object is built behind the scenes. And this is something that you don't have when when you use the abstraction. You can see I don't see the constructor because it, it will simply be a dynamic proxy behind the scenes. The result in both cases, it's an instance which is not an entity. And that's very important. So in terms of JPA, the two ways, or including the class, if you want the three ways of doing that, they work similarly, meaning that the object that will be created will be outside of the JPA context, being outside of the JPA context. That, that, that actually means uh, that uh, if, you make, if you would make a change on it, of course, you can't make a change here and neither here because the records are immutable and the abstraction is immutable. But if you create a class, you would be able to make changes over the instance which I don't recommend, I still recommend you make it immutable, but you could theoretically make it mutable and make changes. But those changes will not be reflected in the context and it will, they will not be reflected in the database. Because remember what, what JPA is, it's a specification for uh, an ORM implementation, which works like this. You have the context and you have entities in the context. And at the end of the transaction, the context will be mapped to the database. So you need to have objects in the context if you want them to be mapped. If they are not in the context, they will not be mapped. The advantage of having details, no matter the way you create them, is that they will be outside of the context. So you can't make mistakes. If you, if you would change them, if, if they would be mutable and you would change them, they will still not reflect at the end of the transaction in the database. But I do recommend you uh, see the previous video I created on that where I demonstrated and I, I even had a video uh, some weeks ago, I remember where I demonstrated uh, the fact that uh, one, of, one of the biggest mistakes that developers do is actually change entities. That's why uh, it's recommended if possible, you work with DTOs instead when you know you don't you create a use case where you don't have changes. If you don't have updates on the entities, then it makes sense to have immutability. And you, you can easily create an immutability using abstract projections or non-abstract if you use records or even classes, but the classes you will have to make them immutable yourself. Can I use JPA interface projection to send them as a request body? Yes, that's what we did, didn't we? So didn't we do that? Exactly, that's, that's what we did. So look, you have the abstraction and it ended up as a, as a response by, oh, you want as a request body. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know because uh, it doesn't really make sense. I, mean, I never use them in practice the other way around. Uh, when you have a request body, you just have some information. It might be or not the same. Uh, but but that's, that's a good point. I think you can't because theoretically this one should be mutable. But anyway, I, I won't say that you can or not since I don't know. Let's, let's keep, it, uh, keep it out for the moment, okay? Uh, and, and cool, basically that, that's everything I wanted to show you. So you see today, as I promised, uh, it was a very short video, but I hope that you learned a lot of things. And now, now you basically know which are all your, all your options to create projections 
uh, and you, you saw the difference, you understood the difference. And of course, I do recommend you go back to the previous videos where I detailed the way you work with uh, projections as records or classes uh, and why we do that. The same things apply to uh, the abstraction as an interface. Uh, but it's the, the difference is here that you again don't have control over the construction but it's much simpler because the only thing you need to do is create the abstraction and then everything maps out of the box uh, guys with that being said i'm very happy that you've been here with me uh, i hope you learned something from this uh, uh, video and i will as usually put this on uh, github so you can access it uh, until next time we meet uh, have an excellent time for learning and i'm waving goodbye Cheers everyone, have a great day.